Hello and welcome to a Cinema 4D and Octane tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at uh, this cluster of spheres that is well lit with a subsurface scattering material and there's a few different uh, components which are going to go into this. It's relatively simple. Um, I did do it with Octane Scatter. I may do it again in motion with X Particles. What inspired me to do this was a project called Signs on Behance by a guy called Nick Kirichenko and uh, he has a few shots in there which uh, inspired me to take a look at this. Now he did do it with X particles and it was in motion so uh, just for global appeal I am going to approach it with uh, Octane Scatter but like I said in the future I may do it with X particles. Without further ado let's get into it. Project files will be on my cell fi make sure you check that out. Let's jump straight into the tutorial. So we're going to lock in a sphere and we'll put the radius to about 15. We'll drop the camera in and you know it, we're going to straighten that thing up and we'll leave the Z where it is, just so we're at a bit, a bit of distance here. Now, of course, we're using Octane Scatter, so we're scattering on the surface of the sphere. If we were to use X particles, we would be able to fill the sphere um, as a volume and fill the entire uh, thing with uh, spheres. Now, you could do this uh, with uh, kind of like a cloner and, and some dynamics, but for simplicity we will just use octane scatter uh, you can double up on scatters uh, together which will then kind of add a bit of depth but we're not really we're going to be using such a high uh, count of, of spheres scattered that we're not really going to be able to see through them into the the hollow hollowness and because we're using randoms and then positions with scales and noises uh, it, it extrudes into the um, inside of the sphere anyway so it's not much of an issue um, so what we'll do is we'll drop in a scatter here and we'll duplicate the sphere uh, we can turn that sphere off because that's just going to be the surface and uh, I'll just do the render settings I'm not really going to change anything right now um, like that. Uh, we'll set that to 10 and I will leave those quite high because we're scattering um, so if we set that to surface and we drop that in here and we put this to about 50 uh, just from those potential close-ups so we do about 0.25 and we drop that there I'm going to set my camera to about 80 now I did use a cool aspect ratio so if you've seen the movie Ben-Hur that was shot in an aspect ratio of uh, 239 to 1 I rendered some of these in 239 to 1 and the others in 185 to 1 I am going to show you a render in 239 to 1 because I don't think a lot of people do that on YouTube and learning aspect ratios is awesome it's awesome it's really interesting stuff but what we'll do is we'll set our count to around 12,000 we'll put our keep away to about 0.1 that will help the uh, the other issue with using octane scatter is the spheres have a tendency to collide with each other and merge and clip together in x particles you won't get that it, it helps it a little bit i guess um and then of course uh, we'll just drop in a random I kind of just realized I've been using Octane Scatter in my past few tutorials, so if you've been following those, um, you should be quite familiar by this point. And Octane Scatter, is, it was a trend of a few years ago, you know, there were so many, there were so many Octane Scatter tutorials uh, kicking around, so it's really nice uh, to revisit that again. Now, on the random, uh, what we want to do is we just kind of want to split this apart. Well, in fact, before we do that, if we come to the scale and uh, maybe we can put this to about three uh, and then I want the spheres to be quite big um, one thing I did do as well is I actually had two spheres in here and the reason for that was because one was a slightly different size and that just helped a little bit of variation so we're, we're weaving between two different spheres at two different scales and it creates a lot of consistency which I like and then what we can do is of course um, you know you just push these apart and you can see the different scales there and you don't want to go too crazy with it you just kind of want to break the, the the structure of the sphere apart now what we'll do is so if we set this position here and we set this to 30 now what this acts is we're not actually going to go anywhere near 30 centimeters in the position is this is a threshold 30 is now the highest that I will be able to push this away from its original size. So if we drop in a noise here and we set something, um, for example, Ober. Ober is quite interesting. 
and you want something quite interesting and cool here. Then we set the low clip all the way up. And um, besides a few ones here or there, we're gonna be back down to zero. And you can assume that 50% is 15, and you can assume that zero is 30. So what we can do is we can dabble around here a little bit, and we just kind of get uh, the parts of it lifting off. And another thing to take note is the global scale. So if I do 500%, what we're gonna be doing is breaking apart much bigger parts and just kind of warping the overall shape of the sphere. Whereas if we take that to 50, what we're instead doing is just kind of shooting individual spheres out. So what I may actually do is bring up the contrast, bring these in a little bit, and then just bring some of those out. Gonna have, I'm just going to make sure that's me. Instead of over, I might try turbulence. Yeah, so I like turbulence a little bit more. It's a bit more confined. Uh, it's still just as interesting. And of course, it, I think this demonstrates a little bit better. That would be zero, that would be around 15, and that would be 30 where we were before. The look I prefer to have is the spheres lifting off. Um, so I definitely think it's good to maybe stick around like something like that it's quite nice nice variation there some nice lifts off lift offs coming and um, i'll duplicate uh, this and what we can get stuck into now is our lighting and our material so the first thing i'm going to do is the material and then i'm going to light it after because lighting right now is not really going to be effective because getting this to look appropriate and right is all in the lighting so we're going to want to diffuse material and uh, well, in fact, what we'll do is we'll actually just jump in here and we'll drop in a mix and we'll switch this one to specular. I'm going to call that one spec. I'm going to call this one diffuse and we'll pop those two together and we'll just call that SSS. So, uh, if we put in a flow now, on my scene it was around 0.45 that differed between the two. Now that could change, but I will leave it there just now. Now we want the spheres to be white. Now one thing you can actually do is power up the whites a lot more by using an RGB spectrum, so we'll do that. We'll duplicate that, if it would like to. A couple more times, we'll use a scattering medium. And we're going to leave the density quite high, somewhere around 95%, and we're going to let the light be the controller for the density. So we're going to instead blast the lights up quite intense. And because we've got the scattering medium, it will still go through uh, the, the volume, the, the material. So then we'll hit fake shadows on that. We'll put a roughness just, just up a little bit. And we can just for good measure pop a scattering medium in there and we'll leave that there just now and we'll put both of these on there so i'm gonna pop in a hdri and this here was the exact hdri i used in my original scene which is from ultimate skies uh, and i would suggest using a sky and um, as you can see, we're getting some nice scatters here, uh, which is what we want. Uh, it's maybe a little bit too much, so we'll mess with that in a second. Uh, and I made sure that it was mainly grey visible. White and grey. And the light's off to the side there. Now, I'm going to duplicate this, and we're going to start moving uh, and itching a bit closer. Uh, to what I will do is save this as an increment for you if you're purchasing the project files so you can dip between them and we'll start inching closer here we'll come up on the side a bit I'm going to tilt my camera way sideways up to 90 we'll get some sort of cool look like this I am going to try and mimic the shot I had uh, so something a little bit like this uh, and for the imager I I did your, your usual sta standard stuff especially in my workflow if you're familiar with it 
you will know I like to work with LUTs and I like to kind of pre-grade. Uh, so this was the LUT I used and I know I used the gamma with about 1.8 and I brought the exposure down a little bit and that kind of flattened out the scene and gave it, it made it quite hazy, uh, which was definitely a look that uh, I was after. And uh, if we pop back in here, what we can do is make this a little bit more rough to something like close to 0.5. And uh, I think that should be good for now. Well, if we come down to zero and we take a look at the material, you can see it's a lot like glass. And if we come up to one, um, we're still getting scattering going on uh, to a very, very small level. So I might try go a little bit higher here, 0.6. I think this might be a little bit more at the alley of what I'm after. We'll see around there just now. Um, now if I etch in a little bit closer, because I like seeing the big spheres. And yeah, actually we'll make this a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna target and uh, set up our depth of field. And one thing I would advise is to spend a bit of time letting your scenes resolve and uh, figure themselves out. Because usually with scattering, at first it can look quite blown out and you, you don't always actually see what's going on until you're, you know, five, 500 or 1000 samples in. So sometimes you've got to sit back and you've just got to observe and look at it and uh, then see what you've made come through. And it's definitely uh, quite a vital thing to do. Now I did have two lights in the original scene and I used those lights uh, to of course add a bit of scattering and to bounce between a bit of warm and a, and a bit of cold which uh, the HDRI is already doing for us and honestly I didn't get the HDRI in such a good position in my original composition uh, to where it gave me this much scattering I had to really mess around with the lights. Uh, now for the sake of the tutorial I will um, do a little bit of light work uh, j just so you can see I don't want to um, go off of this fluke that I've got here with the HDRI. So I had a light above and it was relatively thin and it was quite a strip like this and we had a fall of map on that and the one above was up, uh, up, up around here on the temperature and it was not too intense but it was intense enough yeah something like that and then if we duplicate that and we reset it I had another one off this way it was around about here and it was a little bit thinner so you can see this is acting as the top here because I'm 90 degrees in the camera. And this one was a little bit warmer and that added some nice variation there. I've just let this shot uh, solve itself a little bit so you can see it uh, a little bit more in depth. You probably want to turn on adaptive sampling for this uh, because you, there can be quite a lot of noise because you're dealing with scattering. That is honestly all I'm going to go over. Uh, if there's anything else you want to get out of the scene, you're just going to have to tweak it and move things about. One thing I want to lay down, which is absolutely vital, is we're using subsurface scattering. And that's a very, very accurate principle to mess with when it comes to lighting. You may notice I made my spheres 0.25 and 0.2. Even making those spheres as big as two centimeters, three, will mean you have to double the strength of your lights or double the size or uh, double uh, or decrease the distance your light is to the spheres by 50%. If you're not getting the same results as me here, do not try to go on your own wing and pay very close attention to what I've done. Because if you have said, I wanna make my spheres five centimeters and you've placed the lights exactly like mine and it's not scattering the same way or the HDRI isn't getting through them the same way, make your spheres smaller, make your light bigger, make your light stronger. I would advise bigger over stronger because stronger may blow your scene out. 
your HDRI alone, if you make the spheres small enough, uh, it should be enough, as you've seen here, to just get straight through them. What is cool here is because we're using a cluster of spheres in an octane scatter, is that the ones around the edges here, where there's much fewer, you've got to think there's 12,000 here, and of course if you look at our frame, and the sphere goes all the way around like this, there's, there's 12,000 there, and there's a lot of them in the middle because we're breaking them apart, so the biggest majority of them are in the centre of the sphere. So in the centre, the scatter breaks away and it becomes much more dense, and they almost just, they look like diffused spheres, and on the edge, the light's going through them really really nicely and of course we've got the warm light up here and we've got the cold light down here so just remember that remember what you're working with subsurface scattering is delicate it's really delicate and that is why i kept my density so high because if you use the lights and uh, the scale of the spheres and uh, the hdi and the distance of those things to your advantage you use them as your controllers for the density uh, and just leave the density alone. Um, there's been a few occasions I've actually put the density up and then uh, just tweak the lights. That's all I'm gonna go over uh, regarding this render. It's much more simple than you think. I would like to try it with X particles and see what kind of looks we can get with much more dense volume. Um, so let me know if you'd like to see that. The project files will be available on my self eye. So if you're struggling to get the results, you can go through them, study them, see what I've done. And of course, huge shout out to Nick Kirichenko for inspiring me to do this render because uh, it's such a simple um, composition and uh, most likely you've already you already had the skills ready to do this um, it's just sometimes it takes a little bit of inspiration to do things so i'll see you for another tutorial very very soon be sure to check out my assets show me your work i'd love to see your renders and um, thanks for watching this and i'll make sure to see you in the next tutorial